Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time I'm unboxing the Samsung Galaxy S24 FE. Let's get started. This is a tighter priced device in theory. Although as of today, you could perhaps find the very same Galaxy S24 at a very similar price. Since in reality, it didn't have as tight a launch price as we expected. In Mexico, it was announced at a price of 16,999 pesos. Fortunately, during the initial stage, there was a very good promotion with different coupons and you could buy it much cheaper. However, the launch price is considerably high. So, it is advisable to purchase it only when there is a promotion or important discount. Definitely, the price is very high. But let's know what it can offer us so that when you see it in a promotion, it can be more attractive. First, let's take it out of the box. And here we already have the device in our hands. In this case, in a green color very similar to the last generation. But in a moment, we'll bring in our guests from last generation, so you can see the most important changes from one generation to the next. For now, what I want to tell you is that it definitely feels good in the hand. The frames feel very solid metal. Let's get this device powered up and while it's powering up, I'll show you another little bit of the contents of the box. Well, in this case, we're simply going to come across Samsung Care Plus advertising. The insurance you can purchase to somehow protect your cell phone against accidents in case you see it necessary. Obviously, it's one more payment you have to make, but it can cover you for some accidents. However, that's all that comes on this side of the box. Fortunately, on the other side of the box, we still manage to find a bit of content, even if you don't have high expectations. Uh, so, we're simply going to find the cable that's USB-C to USB-C. It is not an exaggeratedly long cable, and remember that the charger is not included, so you should buy the charger separately, or you can purchase some power delivery compatible charger, which is also going to be compatible with the fast charging of this device. Let's see what else comes over here, because we will only find necessary regulatory documentation, and finally, we have the key to remove the tray, but that's all a very terse box. So to make this unboxing more fun, we definitely need to bring in the last generation as a special guest. But before we compare it one-on-one -on -one with the past generation, let's tell you the full specs of this device. It is 8 millimeters thick and weighs 213 grams. So if it's thin, although not necessarily very light, that can give you two feelings. One, discomfort because it's a little bit heavy compared to other much lighter devices. But on the other hand, usually the more premium devices are even heavier. So it also gives you a little bit of that feeling depending on your perception. The screen is 6.7 inches in its diagonal. It offers us full HD plus resolution, 120 Hz in its refresh rate and protected with Gorilla Glass Victus. A good quality screen. In fact, to be exact, it is the dynamic AMOLED 2X technology used by Samsung in the high end. So yes, it is a screen that delivers according to what one would expect from Samsung on a device that is still part of the high-end series. Uh, we will find stereo sound with a speaker on the bottom, another speaker in the earpiece area for calls, so it delivers in that aspect as well. The front camera is 10 megapixels with f2.4 aperture, but in this case with fixed focus. So unlike Samsung's high-end, Still, the front camera is not that advanced. In this case, you're looking at a preview before taking the picture in a backlit environment. And notice that after taking the picture, it manages to balance highlights and shadows in a better way to give the texture of the cloud in this case. But something you should know that is also present in this device is the HDR technology for the photographs. Notice that there are some areas of the photo that will have more brightness on the screen when viewing them through this device. Notice how it is going to be noticeable when I do this gesture that this option is disabled and when I let go notice how it gains more brightness in these areas. It gives a very realistic feeling. It is a bit complicated to show it through the camera, but it is an important element at the user experience level. On the back, we will find the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with f2.2 aperture and fixed focus. Then the 50 megapixel main camera with f1.8 aperture and optical stabilization, as well as autofocus. 
And finally, the 8 megapixel telephoto camera with f2.4 aperture and 3x optical summation. That is the same camera as last generation. In that sense, there is no evolution. And here I have some examples, but before I show them to you in more detail, again, it is necessary to highlight this incorporation of HDR technology. I don't know if you can perceive with this same realism through the camera, but for example, this white wall that reflects with a lot of intensity of the sun, we can see it with a lot of realism through this screen. We are going to deactivate the effect so that you can see how it becomes a much softer illumination and when it is activated it increases the power of the screen. So that point we can get to give us a feeling that the camera is of better quality even though it's actually the same as last generation. Now you are seeing on the screen this picture with the ultra wide camera where it seems to me that the device shows us a good image quality. I have nothing to say about that other than it's a very good picture then you're looking at the picture with the main camera and again we see a good color rendition overall it performs well now you're looking at the telephoto camera picture it's always a nice addition to see this camera present on the device and it can also give us good color good dynamic range in general now you are looking at the 2x zoom photography and i must tell you that samsung in this device debuted a new photography engine that looks really good in this case, it improves the level of detail significantly without feeling so artificial photography or without an exaggerated sharpness as we saw in past generations. Finally, in 3x, this would be the result with the maximum zoom offered by this device. Here, if I notice a little more sharpness of the account, but much better than in past generations. So, despite having the same hardware, actually through software Samsung has improved the quality of photography. You're also seeing on screen some portrait examples first with the main camera, subsequently with a 2x zoom setting where it still has a sufficiently high level of detail, and finally with the 3x setting where also the portrait quality is quite good in this case in an indoor setting with low lighting and the pictures come out very nice. Uh, with respect to video recording, note that it goes up to actually K available this with the main camera or 4K with any of the three cameras, even 4K at 60 frames per second. And with respect to the front camera, we're also going to find available on the device even at 60 frames per second. I think it has very good capabilities in terms of video recording. The battery is 4,700 mAh with support for 25 watt charging, but you have to buy the charger separately. It also supports 15 watts wireless charging and also has reversible wireless charging so you can charge an accessory on the back of this device. Even a cell phone, although remember that the most recent Samsung watches such as the Galaxy Watch 7 or the Galaxy Watch Ultra do not support this feature for some strange reason. This device also integrates a fingerprint reader inside the display. It also has the IP68 level of resistance against water and dust. And now let me tell you the performance related stuff. It has 256 gigabytes of storage and right out of the box it showed me 9% in use that is 25 gigabytes used which considering all the level of options that this device brings the truth is a relatively low figure. I have even seen other devices with simpler software with more storage space used so there again we see a good level of optimization. We will also find 8 gigabytes of RAM which in Samsung I think is the minimum for you to have a good fluidity because with 6 gigabytes of RAM may still get to have some stumbles and with 4 I do not tell you. Other devices might have less RAM but they might be more fluid because their software is a little lighter. In the case of Samsung you have a lot of options, in fact that could turn out to be a major benefit. It comes with Android 14 and One UI 6.1. In this case it has Galaxy AI with the whole suite. This is one of the most relevant points and possibly its main attraction because although Samsung is releasing good updates, it is not really sending all the Galaxy AI features to various devices, but in this case we will find the call assistant to have real-time translation or for the device to answer for you and you just type. We also have the chat assistant to be able to translate chats in another language compatible with WhatsApp. It also helps you to compose some messages. You simply put the main idea and the writer will generate a much longer message. It is also able to check your style, grammar, if you have a Galaxy Watch 7 or Galaxy Watch Ultra, it can also give you suggested answers through this watch. And well, it's really a lot of options. All this translator also without the need to have internet connection, so you do not spend data. 
We will also find the notes assistant to summarize, give different formatting to your notes and much more. The navigation assistant so that through the Samsung web browser also gives you complete summaries of the pages or can translate them. And well, the photo editing tools to remove or move objects in your photo, even transform your photos to different portrait styles. Also create drawings simply based on some simple sketch you have made and also transform your wallpapers. So, as I say, it has a lot of Galaxy AI features. This is the most attractive point, which interestingly is through software. I mean, perfectly Samsung could send all these functions through an update to many devices of past generations, but it is considering it as a privilege for newer devices or higher end devices. And then finally, the processor is the Exynos 2400E. A new processor, it's sort of a modification to the Exynos 2400, so let's take a look at its scores. In Geekbench, it scored 2,152 points in single core and 6,775 points in multi-core. The truth is that it is quite a powerful processor. That is, it gives us a score very similar to the average that can get to give the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So it is definitely a completely flagship processor. We will only have to put it to the test in games later to see if it is able to maintain good performance or will show some instability, which is what Samsung has generally had in its devices with Exynos when playing games. Well, in Antutu, it scored 1,755,600 points just for reference. But remember that in the video, we will have specific tests for you to see in more detail the performance it can achieve. So now I brought in its younger brother. Notice that even the color is similar, although it is a bit more vibrant in this new generation. However, they look similar in practical life, and even though they look very similar in size, overall there has been a significant increase in screen size. Last generation had a 6.4 inch diagonal size, now we find 6.7 inches. This has been possible mainly due to the reduction in bezel size, which is still not something spectacular, but compared to last generation, we definitely see a much more refined job in this new generation. Note the bottom bezel of the last generation was extremely large. The rest of the bezels are a little more similar, but we still see a little better work in this new generation. And with the change in size also comes a change in battery size, which was previously 4,500 milliamp hours and is now 4,700 milliamp hours. Another thing that we could say changed is the storage, which previously started at 128 gigabytes. Now it is 256, a completely fair evolution. The processor is another one of those natural changes from one generation to the next. Before we found the Exynos 2200, now we find the Exynos 2400E, which at least in theory the evolution should be brutal. Note, for example, that at the time this was the score of the Galaxy S23 Efe, which is not bad, but yes, there is a very important jump in the power that we will find. Another subtle change will also be that the screen of this new generation is slightly brighter, although it is something virtually imperceptible and possibly only noticeable when you're watching HDR content. Previously, we were going to find Gorilla Glass 5 protection. Now we find Gorilla Glass Victus. The thickness has been slightly reduced before it was 8.2 millimeters and now it is 8 millimeters. But in the rest of things, it will have a very similar behavior. Since even the Galaxy S23 FE of the last generation already received the update integrating the Galaxy AI features. So also in that aspect, the experience will be very similar. If you were to ask me, should I buy the Galaxy S24 FE or the Galaxy S23 FE? I would tell you that if you want to give a priority to have a good purchase for little amount of money, definitely that Galaxy S23 FE will be a very good option. But if you are not so concerned about the budget, definitely that Galaxy S24 FE is a better alternative. Although it is not a brutal improvement from one generation to another, but we will find more power, better quality photos by the new engine, better battery, more storage. So the truth is that both options can become good, but Galaxy S24 FE, I would recommend you to buy it only if you find it in a good promotion. And with this, we have come to the end of this video. If you liked it, you know you can tell us about it and see you next time.